kaiju. Giant monsters. Strange beasts. Throughout all of our history, these creatures of legend have ravaged humanity. Some have brought doom to us. Others have saved our kind. And today, I would like to highlight one of the thousands of kaiju from our popular culture. Going over who they are, their story, their real life history, and more. I'm your host, Minecraft World, and this is Let's Talk Kaiju. Episode 1, Godzilla. Spoiler warning, you have been warned. The year was 1954. It was nine years after the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki had struck Japan. Since then, the nation had undergone multiple changes and had slowly but surely began to pick up its feet. However, several kilometers southeast, the United States had been testing their nuclear weapons in the South Pacific, trying to make a stronger and stronger bomb in order to combat the Soviet Union. And they had just unleashed their most infamous weapon, which was designated Castle Bravo. The bomb, detonated in the Bikini Atoll, wielded 15 megatons worth of TNT, and set the entire landscape on fire, poisoning anything caught in the crossfire with radiation. And that included the Lucky Dragon 5. The Japanese tuna fishing boat was 25 meters long, weighed 140 tons, and carried 23 men total. Following exposure to Castle Bravo, the boat was infected with tons of radioactive material, contaminating all of the tuna on board, as well as the people running the ship. Once they returned, all the men were hospitalized and treated for acute radiation syndrome. Tensions rose amongst nations as both the United States and Japan would grow somewhat hostile towards the other, as it had been found that radiation was likely also getting into the fish brought home, thus contaminating the market. However, amidst the chaos, a crew of filmmakers were gathering together. Toho producer Tomiyuki Tanaka had gathered together a group of many, including film director Ishiro Honda and special effects artist Eiji Tsuburaya, and had begun work on a film that would later spark a genre. Inspired by the 1953 American film The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, the 1933 American film King Kong, and the Lucky Dragon 5 incident, these people worked tirelessly to create their film. Released on November 3rd, 1954, the movie was to be entitled Gojira, or as the West called it, Godzilla. Following several disappearances of multiple ships off the coast of Japan, a ragtag group of scientists, sailors, and citizens are sent out in order to figure out what is going on. However, their finds lead them to discover that an ancient creature has been reawakened from its slumber, dubbing this creature Gojira, or Godzilla for western viewers. After the legends from a nearby island, 
it is now up to them and the entire nation of Japan to keep him from making his way to the shore before it is too late. Today, Gojira is known for being a far more striking and powerful film, telling a dark story about loss, fear, and devastation, ending with a powerful message about how man should be careful about what he does with nuclear weapons. The message being very heavily prominent in the film itself, displaying the titular kaiju as being a child of the nuke. Gojira, when it first released, struck hard amongst Japanese audiences, causing it to be a pretty good success, and as such, Toho capitalized on it by diving headfirst into a sequel. 1955's Godzilla Raids Again served as a quick continuation of the original Gojira, bringing Godzilla back and pitting him against his first ever opponent, Anguirus, a spiky ankylosaurus looking kaiju, and with this, the concept of the kaiju fight was born. Godzilla Raids Again was not as successful as the first, and as such, Godzilla was shelved for a bit. Plans for a third film were conceived, but would ultimately fall through. That is, until 1962, when Toho purchased the rights to use King Kong for a crossover flick, pitting the giant ape against Frankenstein's monster. However, the script slowly got transformed as Toho sought the opportunity to revitalize their star child, and as such, King Kong vs. Godzilla was born. The film became the single highest attended Godzilla film at that point, and to this day is considered a fan favorite. And with the release of King Kong vs. Godzilla, the character would officially become much more of a household name in both the East and West, as the Showa era continued. It officially kicked into high gear in 1964, which saw the release of both Mothra vs. Godzilla and Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster both of which would introduce Mothra and King Ghidorah respectively, with both kaiju soon becoming two of Godzilla's greatest reoccurring characters. And it would continue to steamroll along throughout the decade, ultimately reaching its climax with Destroy All Monsters in 1969. Nice. The film, when it was first released, was intended to be a finishing project, an Avengers Endgame-style finale. The film featured a total of 11 monsters, and the plot focused around an alien invasion, ultimately culminating in an epic final clash between monsters of Earth and King Ghidorah. Following Destroy All Monsters' success, however, as well as the fact of Godzilla's very vocal fanbase, most of which consisted of children at the time, Toho decided to continue with their films in 1970 with All Monsters Attack, better known as Godzilla's Revenge. The film was a much more low-budget endeavor, consisting of reused footage of fights from previous Godzilla movies, such as 1966's Ebera Horror of the Deep and 1967's Son of Godzilla, with a plot primarily focused on a young boy interacting with Godzilla's son, Manila, as he learns to fight for himself against a new monster, Gabara. The film showcased a major aspect that would permeate the rest of the Showa-era films, that being the far lower budgets that they would have. While it wasn't apparent right away, as 1971's Godzilla vs. Hedorah was more so a surrealist-style film, the lower budget would begin to show with a film that followed, Godzilla vs. Gigan, which reused three new suits and featured multiple instances of footage from previous films. This would be ramped up with the film following that, Godzilla vs. Megalon. Once 1974 rolled around, the footage reuse issue was far less apparent as the next two movies, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla and Terror of Mechagodzilla, were given a larger budget in celebration of the character's 30th birthday. However, following the release of Terror of Mechagodzilla, as well as multiple cultural changes of the time, both in Japan and overseas, it was clear that the character had to take a break. And, for nine years, that would be the case. Toho went through concept after concept, trying desperately to come up with a revitalization, and soon, they had it. In 1984, Toho brought their star child out of hibernation, releasing Godzilla 1984, a dark and apocalyptic film that very heavily evokes the 1954 movie, and showcasing a Japan caught between the Cold War and fearing for their lives. 
The movie in Japan was an absolute success, and five years later, Toho would produce a sequel. They held a fan script project, allowing people to submit their own potential scripts for a Godzilla movie, and the winner would have their film made. That winner would become Godzilla vs. Biollante, and with that, the Heisei era would officially kick off. Over the first half of the 1990s, Godzilla would continue to shine, bringing in kaiju both old, such as King Ghidorah and Mechagodzilla, and new, such as Batra and Space Godzilla, and ending in 1995 with, after many different concepts and ideas, Godzilla vs. Destroya, which would finish off the character's Heisei era for good by killing the character himself. The film picked Godzilla, who had been dying due to his internal core melting, up against Destroya, a monster birthed from the Oxygen Destroyer that had killed the very first Godzilla back in the original 1954 movie, and ended with the character succumbing to his core, melting down to a beautiful and heartbreaking song by composer Ikeda Fukube. However, this wouldn't be the last time the 90s would feature the character. Over the course of the decade, discussions were afoot as Godzilla was slated to go to America. To make a very long story short, Following a large change in direction and a complete overhaul of a scrapped concept, the film, dubbed Godzilla, and directed by Dean Devlin and Roland Emmerich, and produced by Sony Pictures and TriStar, would release in 1998, and, well, it didn't go over well. The film was panned by critics, casual audiences, and fans, all both domestic and international, and would utterly bomb at the box office. Most of the criticisms towards the film was levied at its massive change to the character's portrayal, changing him from a towering, unstoppable force of nature to a cowardly, animalistic, and easily beaten creature. Following the release of the 1998 Godzilla, Toho immediately got to work on their own new film. Godzilla 2000 Millennium would be released in 1999, to far more positive reception, and would be granted an American theatrical release, which while still positively received, still failed at the box office. This would become a reoccurring issue throughout the films released across the early 2000s, which were dubbed the Millennium Era. The era would span through the early 2000s and ended in 2004, with each film being more unique from the one prior. From the grounded science fiction rematch that was Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, which told a far more human story about a woman dealing with her indirectly leading to the death of her squadron, to the poignant and mystical Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah giant monsters all out attack. A fan favorite film that gave a powerful message letting the people know not to forget their past atrocities. The Millennium Era's variety allowed it to explore reaches that the character had yet been. However, dwindling returns forced Toho to put the character back into bed, but not without one last epic celebration, scheduled for his 50th birthday. Godzilla Final Wars would release in 2004 and would be the character's wildest film yet, featuring a total of 14 kaiju, three more than that of Destroy All Monsters, and was a chaotic and action-packed thrill ride that homaged the character's long and varied legacy all culminating in a 2v2 smackdown between Godzilla and Mothra, facing Gigan and Monster X, who would later be revealed to be Kaiser Ghidorah, a stronger variant of King Ghidorah. When released, the film's reception was... mixed at best, and unceremonious at worst. The film bombed hard at the box office, and reviews were heavily mixed as some praised the film, designating it as a fantastic celebration of the character, whilst others heavily criticized it and lambasted it. But when all was said and done, Godzilla was back in hibernation, and he would stay there for ten more years. <laughs> Later, at Comic-Con 2012, after almost eight years of radio silence, there would be an announcement, one that would signal the rebirth of many a fan. Godzilla was back. Released in May of 2014 and directed by Gareth Edwards and produced by Warner Brothers and Legendary Pictures, the United States would try again with their attempt at another Godzilla movie, dubbed Godzilla. 
The film followed Ford Brody, an American soldier, as he is sent to go collect his father, Joe Brody, played by Brian Cranston. But, as that happens, he is wrapped in by a government conspiracy involving a secret organization dubbed Monarch, and learns about their mission, to hunt and study massive monsters. Two unnamed ones that they have dubbed Massive Unidentified Terrestrial Organisms, or MUTOs, and their predator, Godzilla. The film took a stylized approach to its story, evoking the 1954 movie subtly as well as 2008's Cloverfield, utilizing a very grounded and human-centric view to portray its world. Critically and financially, the film was an absolute success, as many praised it for its use of cinematography and portrayal of the titular character, though some threw dislike towards the mutos, although sentiment has lightened up in the years following, as well as heavily criticized the human characters, especially the film killing off Joe Brody towards the end of the first act, and the film cutting away from the monster action or obscuring it in some form. However, the success of the movie was enough to reignite fans of the franchise, and as such, Toho would join in on the craze, bringing back their own version of the character. And shortly after the release of Godzilla 2014, they would get to work. Two years later, in 2016, they would release their film, Shin Godzilla. The film, directed by Hideaki Anno and Shinji Higuchi, served as a soft remake of the 1954 movie carrying many elements of that film, but adapting them to the modern day, drawing a lot of its imagery from the subject matter of the 2011 Fukushima earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear meltdown. The movie was a massive success, and re-cemented Godzilla back into the popular culture, officially kicking off the Reiwa era, which is still continuing today as of writing this. Following the success of Shin Godzilla, Godzilla's popularity soared as the character was officially back in the limelight, Comics, video games, figures, and much, much more would become far more prominent, more so than even during that of the Millennium Era, which saw a massive growth of media surrounding it. And on the film front, Godzilla continues to go strong. The 2014 movie would go on to spawn the MonsterVerse, a massive multimedia project that was heavily based off the success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Following the 2014 movie, a subsequent sequel would be greenlit, releasing five years later in 2019. Entitled Godzilla, King of the Monsters, the movie would serve as a larger and more bombastic continuation of the 2014 movie, and would bring in several others from Godzilla's rogues gallery, those being Mothra, Rodan, and King Ghidorah, as well as introducing many new monsters. Two years later, in 2021, Legendary would release Godzilla vs. Kong, after multiple delays. This film, after being set up in both 2017's Kong Skull Island and 2019's Godzilla, King of the Monsters, promised an epic rematch between the two titular titans, which it delivered, much to the delight of many who watched it. And just over two years following Godzilla vs. Kong, Monarch Legacy of Monsters would air on Apple TV+. The show would flash back to the time between Godzilla 2014 and Godzilla King of the Monsters, as well as flashing further back to the 1950s, showcasing the events that happened during that time. The show was praised for how it used its human characters and monsters to tell its story, as well as it being a far higher production quality in comparison to other television shows of the time. And as of writing this, the MonsterVerse has yet to slow down with 2024's upcoming Godzilla x Kong The New Empire, which features Godzilla and Kong teaming up together in order to face a threat greater than they and humanity could ever imagine one that could spell doom for both titans and humans alike. Meanwhile, in Japan, Toho would try desperately to recreate the success of Shin Godzilla. During 2017 and 2018, Toho would release an anime trilogy of Godzilla films, which released theatrically in Japan and on Netflix everywhere else. Godzilla, Planet of Monsters, Godzilla, City on the Edge of Battle, and Godzilla, The Planet Eater. These movies told the story of humanity leaving Earth following a mass attack of kaiju, ultimately vowing to return only to find that the world is overrun by monsters, led by an absolutely gigantic Godzilla. 
The films were despised by fans, mainly due to lackluster humans as well as not taking advantage of the animation. Later, in early 2021, Toho would also debut another animated show, Godzilla Singular Point, which also debuted on Netflix. The show follows a series of ragtag human characters in the year 2030 as they deal with an invasion of giant monsters, led by an eldritch, evolving Godzilla. The series was far better received and carried a lot of elements that Shin held, most notably its depiction of Godzilla, but it also reintroduced many other classic kaiju. Kind of. Alongside the animated properties, Toho would release different short films in celebration of the characters' anniversaries, as well as the 50th anniversaries of Gigan and Megalon. And finally, in 2023, Toho would release Godzilla Minus One, the most recent film as of writing this. The film traveled back to the year 1947 and followed Koichi Shikishima as he deals with his past trauma from events of the war, as well as having to survive from a very powerful and very angry Godzilla, whom he and a ragtag group of people have to find a way to take down before it's too late. The film received universal praise upon release. Fans, critics, and casual audiences adored it, and the film would well overperform in its box office run, making over 95 million USD as of writing this, as well as becoming the most successful Japanese film screened in the US, even getting a nomination for Best of Effects at the Academy Awards. Throughout his 70-year-long history, Godzilla has stood as a monument of pop culture, and has changed significantly from his beginnings. From the physical manifestations of nuclear traumas, to a leader of a cinematic universe, and a figure of destruction, Godzilla's popular mainstay is likely to be long, vast, and iconic. I have been your host, Minecraft World, and this has been Let's Talk Kaiju. Next time, we discuss the guardian of the universe himself, Gamera.